What's up guys? So today's video I'm talking about public speaking and the reason why I'm talking about public speaking today and rather than my frustration of what YouTube are doing, I thought I'd be a little bit more relevant to something that was brought to my attention earlier this week. I talked to a college classmate after we were told that we may have to present our project that we have to do to our class and my classmate turned and said to me, that he doesn't know if he'd be able to talk in public because he suffers from social anxiety. Now, of course, naturally, when it comes to public speaking, it can be a fearful thing for a lot of people. Some people are very, very confident and very good at speaking, while others don't have that confidence and they fear their speech. Now, for other people, then, it is a trial and error and a practice, lots and lots of practice, in order to gain that confidence and to be able to go and present. Now, of course, naturally, when it comes to presenting, a project you are actually doing the research and you should already know your presentation a presentation of a project is only going to be bullet points of the actual project so you don't have to really worry about knowing everything but you still have to know enough so that when it comes to being asked a question that you're able to answer it. in school we're not really taught how to present in primary school we have our days where we're called show and tell where we brought something in to show and talk about it but at the same time we are not really brought to the point where it is a presentation and it's made a big deal out of. Now, of course, in secondary school, we don't really get that either. We don't really have to present anything to anyone. So we don't really have that practice. And then all of a sudden we go into third level where we are in college or university. And all of a sudden now we have to do projects and then we have to present our findings to a bunch of people that we may or may not know. Public speaking can become a crippling factor for a lot of people. And some people will get to a point where they're so nervous that they can't speak. I've had experience with people who are very, very good at presenting and I have experience with people who are very, very bad at presenting. And I've had experience where I've seen people who are quite mediocre at it. Personally for me, I never really had any issues with public speaking, but I wouldn't be a great public speaker. It's taken a lot of time and practice for me to be comfortable at actually speaking to people or even just in general. My first experience of doing any type of presentation was when I was 18 or 19 years of age and it was my first year of college. And this is where I realized that I sucked at speaking in public and my nerves were so out of whack, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I think I spent most of my time in the bathroom trying to calm myself down, which is very, very common for some people. Now, however, as time progressed and as you get used to talking to large numbers of people where you don't know them or you do know them, public speaking can become quite easy. And one of the points that I actually figured out along the way was to find faces in the crowd that you recognize. As I got more and more accustomed to doing presentations, I kind of come across different techniques that work for me. And two of the techniques that worked for me was one, picking points on the wall where I can focus in on them while it looks like I'm looking at the audience, even though I am not looking at them at all, I am focusing on the wall and what I'm trying to present. And hopefully that my presentation is making sense to them and they're not gonna ask me an awkward question. Another one I have found to be quite useful when I'm presenting to a classroom of friends and people I know is to pick a couple of those individuals throughout the room and keep try to grab their attention and while I'm presenting to focus in on them at different points throughout my presentation. And this also helps you to relax. And once it's all done and dusted, you can relieve yourself of that big heavy breath that's sitting in your lungs and you can relax. Of course, this doesn't mean that you're not gonna get asked the awkward questions. So number one, another thing when it comes to presenting and public speaking is to know what you're talking about and to fully understand what you're talking about. Because if you don't, you're going to get asked the awkward question. And if you can't answer that question, it does make people question your liability. Now, one of the things that I've noticed some people have often said to people, and I don't know whether they're being serious or they're joking, is to picture people naked. Now, of course, this is a common one that you will hear, oh, picture people naked or in their underwear or whatever it is. But I find this one to be a bit weird because if you're presenting to a room full of the same sex, it can be very, very awkward. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to be even suggested because I don't even know how I would actually ma imagine, pe imagine people in their underwear. I mean, like, it, uh, 
what, yeah, no, don't do it. Just don't do it. One of the, I have a few points that I want to make when it comes to doing a, to, I have a couple of points to look at when it comes to public speaking or presenting. And one of the best methods to start off with is to pick a couple of close friends, go to a quiet area and just present what you have to do or what you have to talk about to them and get their feedback. Start small, the smaller you start, then you can expand. Of course, naturally, if you know you're going to have to talk to a room full of 50 people and you're only talking to a group of maybe four or five people, it can be quite different. However, if you have close friends that are not going to take the piss out of you and it would help you, this makes things a lot easier when you do have to talk to that group of 50 people because you had already got a little bit of experience talking to your friends and presenting what you have. Point number two is to prepare yourself. Now, of course, this is already being said already previously where you said like it's all about your research and knowing what you're talking about. So you have to prepare yourself for the worst case scenarios as well as not only when I talk about work, when I talk about worst case scenarios, sometimes in presentations, the computers don't may not work. Your USB may not work. Your folder may not open and there'll be some hiccups along the way. Of course, naturally, this is expected. And usually when it's up and running again, you can start your presentation. But if this does happen, just take a deep breath and relax because it does happen and it happens more regularly than you think. Point number three is to don't memorize anything when you're talking in public or presenting. Always have cue cards at hand so that you can get back on point if you feel that you are coming off the point. If you try to memorize everything, it can cause a lot of mix ups for yourself. You could go ahead of yourself or you could be behind yourself because you ended up with dragging on a, on a point where it wasn't necessary. Point number four, avoid bullets. Now the avoid bullets is meaning avoid bullet points. Now, of course, naturally in presentations, it is usually bullet point format, but if you add in a couple of maybe fade in, fade out of content, it kind of just gives that visual appealing to your audience. Also, of course, when it comes to PowerPoint, there's other programs. There's a program called Prezi, which is also very animated and it's actually kind of enjoyable to watch if you're watching a lot of PowerPoint presentations. So that is something to keep in mind. I will actually put the Prezi link down below if anyone wants to check it out because I used that quite a lot when I was in college. Point number five is to reduce stress. Don't stress. Whatever you do, try not to stress. Do everything and anything possible not to stress about your presenting or talking in public because the more you stress about it, the more you put yourself in a bit of a tizzy and the less you'll actually be able to do when you're on the stage or podium or wherever you're doing your now there's different ways to distress yourself you can go for a cup of coffee beforehand you can talk to your friends about something outside of what you have to do and so on and so forth but try not to stress because stress doesn't do anyone any favors Point number six is to find a friend or friends. If you have multiple friends within the audience when you're presenting or talking, it makes it easy for you to present. Focus in on them at different points and it makes it look like you are looking at everyone. And this falls into point number seven, engage your audience. So if you are presenting and you are looking at the ground or you're looking up at the ceiling and you're avoiding people's eye contact, you're not engaging your audience and they feel this and then they feel disconnected so point number six and point number seven are pretty much on power one order and the worst case scenario things don't go well for you don't sweat it i mean not every public speaking or pres presentation um scenario will go in your favor i've had some very good ones and i have had some very very bad ones and i have had ones where i've just put in a in a, in a case and uh thrown in the river but on that note, everyone, if you thought this video was any bit of helpful to you, please give me a good old like. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click over here to subscribe, and I will see you very soon. Peace.